We're out today and this time of year it's all about getting bites for me. Just being out, catching some fish and at this time of year I probably enjoy it more than in the summer when it's bagging because the thing I absolutely love is silverfish fishing on commercials and we're at Packington today and that's what we're going to do. I was on this lake a little while ago, fished a silver match on here and had a great day catching skimmers and roach. So I thought it would be the ideal time to come back and have another go and see what we can catch. There are a few things that I learnt that day that I didn't get it right in the match but I'm hoping today I can kind of put a few wrongs uh, to right and hopefully catch a few more fish than I did that day. But I'm going to keep it quite simple. I've got a few baits with me. Maggots, which I think are absolutely vital at this time of year just for targeting roach and skimmers. As well, you can catch cruisings, you can catch tench, you can catch perch on them. But I just find the bait that's going to catch every single species that's in this type of water and sort of get you the maximum return on the day. And then the other thing I've got is pellets as well. But I want when I actually get fishing, I'll talk to you a little bit more about the pellet fishing because on this type of venue, when there's carp present, and if you do want to target the silverfish, I, I think that you should be 100% committed to targeting the silvers. So I put pellets in in a way that's that's going to target the silverfish and not the carp but we'll go into that in a little bit more detail but first I'll talk you through the rigs that I've set up and the important thing which is the different lines that I'm going to fish. Something I think is really important when you're targeting silverfish on commercials is having multiple swims that you can catch from. The time that you're going to catch from one swim all day is gone. I mean that, that's something for summer where you're fishing down the edge or you're fishing short or shallow and you can catch from one swim and have a brilliant day. Unfortunately, then weeks have passed now. So now it's a case of trying to catch fish from one swim and then move to another one and catch a few more fish, move again. And that's how I like to build up a good weight of silvers on a commercial. So what I've done today, I've plumbed up a line, uh, a top kit plus three section. So we're probably talking like seven, eight metres at inside line. And the great thing about that is that that swim and then my two other swims that I've plumbed up at 30 metres, they're all the same depth within an inch. So um, because I'm going to fish slightly over depth, which is something I'll touch on when I go through my rigs, I can actually use the same rigs for all three swims. So I always try and look for, for spots, if possible, where I can use the same rigs for at least one or two different swims. Just when it comes to catching fish, it means it can move from one to another really easily and you're not having to ship back, change rigs, which upsets your rhythm, especially when you're catching like roach and, and skimmers and smaller fish. So first swim, which is one that I'll start on, is my closing line. And then I've also plumbed up two lines at 30 metres. Now, something that I think is really, really, really important at this time of year is to think about the position of the sun. So as I'm sat in my box today, the sun's to my left slightly, and I'm going to be looking directly at the sun pretty much. So something to bear in mind is if you, you fish one line at 30 metres, which I, I expect to be my main catching line today, and the sun moves over that line and I can't see my float, then I'm going to stop catching. And I've seen it happen many a time in a match, and, and I've done it myself in the past. I've been catching on a line, the sun's moved across, I can't see my float, and for probably half an hour, 45 minutes, you just sat there waiting for the sun to move. You're trying to start another line up or you're trying to catch somewhere else and you've missed a big chunk of your match where you're catching. So what I've done today and what I always like to do when I'm targeting silvers and the sun is going to be a problem like in the winter often is, is I plumb up a line at two o'clock and then a line at 10 o'clock. So at two different angles. So it's today, I've got one line to my right slightly there and the sun's to my left. So I know that I can catch on that. So pretty much probably all the match until the last hour, I'm going to be all right on my right hand swim. My left hand swim, which is that one there, I'm probably going to be all right there for, I would think, the next hour. So, hour, hour and a half. So, I'm going to start on the inside line. I'll probably give that 45 minutes to an hour. And then I can just start that line, I'll probably nick a few fish off there for half an hour. And then the sun's going to be over that line. Then I can move to my right hand swim, again, nick a few fish off there, and then by the time it's sort of time to move again, the sun should have passed that swim and I can catch off that one. And then likewise, as the sun comes round, I can keep catching off both swims throughout the day. That last hour when it's on my right hand swim, 
I can move to my left hand swim and so I've always got somewhere to go. And the inside line, I always feed it. Keep trickling a little bit of bait in and the fish will come back and you can keep going back on that inside line and having a little flurry of fish. Probably catch three or four fish, just rest on the other lines and then go back long. But having those three lines and just rotating them all is really important if you want to keep putting fish in the net. And when you're catching commercial silvers, that's definitely what you need to be doing. So pick three lines, hopefully all the same depth so you can use the same rig. And then think about the sun and position a couple of lines so you're always going to have somewhere to fish. Then hopefully you can keep putting fish in the net and build up a big net of fish. Uh, what I'll do is quick talk through the rigs as well that I've used and the reason why I'm fishing over depth as well, which I think is quite important. So I'll whiz this back in and hopefully show you my rig. Rigs that I've got set up for today, I've set up three different rigs, all for a slightly different purpose. I think I touched on in the intro the fact that if you're going to fish for commercial silvers, I think you need to commit to it. Uh, see, a lot of people do it half-heartedly and probably use a slightly fine down carp rig, and for me, that's completely wrong. You're fishing for roach, fishing for skimmers, you're fishing for small fish, and I think fishing 016, 018 lines and probably a, an 18 or 20 carp style hook is is not right for fishing a single maggot. I've got a slightly more positive rig set up that I'll touch on in a minute, but the, my main two catching rigs are pretty much what I use on the drains and stuff um, around Lincolnshire. So they're really fine down. I'm fishing 012 power micron main line, and that's down to a 010 hook length and then a size 18 uh, prototype hook that we're just testing at the minute, which is a barbless hook, quite a fine wire pattern. And the float on this first rig is a 4x12. It's a slim pencil style float. It's got a wire stem, and then that's just shotted with strung out shotting to give a really slow fall. And then what I'm looking to do with this rig, this will probably be my main catching rig today, is just trickle a few maggots in. I don't want loads of fish going crazy for the bait or anything. I'm just going to keep trickling a few maggots in, laying this in through the water and hopefully catching a few roach on the drop. And then, as I said, when I was talking about my different lines, I fish these slightly over depth. And the thinking behind that is that as I lay my rig in and it falls through the water, I've got a chance of picking up the roach that will intercept it probably in the last third of the swim. And then as the bait settles, it's laid on the bottom and then I'm fishing for skimmers. So with one rig, and in one drop through, I'm kind of fishing for two different species. So drop it in, hold the float tight so it's a nice slow fall, hopefully catch a roach. And if not, it drops to the bottom, sit there and wait, and I'll probably just lift and drop my float a little bit, just to try and tempt a, a sort of fish into taking it. And then that's normally a skimmer. So just with one rig, a four by 12 strung out, I've got sort of two chances of catching fish, so to speak. The second rig is very, very similar. And it's exactly the same float, 012 to 010, but this time it's a 4x14. And this is just if the wind gets up slightly and or the roach are probably not as quick or as big as I'd like to, them to be. If I'm dropping it in and catching a roach every chuck on the drop and they're probably sort of two to four ounces, I mean, I'm going to just hammer them. I'm just going to keep going and keep going and catching them because why are you putting fish in the net? And it's happy days, isn't it? But for the skimmers, if, if the roach are not feeding and I'm targeting the skimmers, I'll go to the 4x14 and it's a small bulk and then three droppers. Again, it's the same size hook, uh, size 18, and I'll probably just fish a single maggot on there. Could put double maggot on this, but I've got another rig that I switch to if I'm really just going to kind of sit out for some, some better silvers. But that's the fish where, probably that's probably my skimmer rig that will pick up roach, but between them two rigs, that kind of covers probably 90% of the fishing that I'm going to do today. The final rig is my positive rig, but it's not positive as in like thick lines and thick hook lengths and big hooks again. It's positive in that my shotting will just exaggerate a bite. So it's instead of getting single small droppers, I've pushed them together and I've got like a tiny little bulk and then two shots together. So they're in effect probably like they're probably more like a um, between a number eight and a number six because they're the two shots pushed together there so it's really positive i'll lay a little bit more line on the bottom with this one so for that i'll probably fish double maggot get it down 
and just sit there on the bottom again laid on and then i'll just i'll just kind of pin that there and wait um, but it's not something that i want to sit on and do all day because i want to keep fish going in the net so if the swim goes a little bit quiet and i think there might be a bigger fish turned up I'll pop this rig on i'll give it two or three minutes if it don't go pick up one of the other rigs and just use that to try and catch anything again the main thing with this is keep putting fish in the net and kind of that's the whole reason for targeting commercial silvers if you ask me so i think it's time we've got some bait in and hopefully catch a few fish Right, we're going to kick things off on that short seven or eight metre line and all I'm going to put in to start with is one small golf ball size ball of ground bait. The reason I'm not going to put loads of bait in is because I don't want to attract carp and I find on these sort of venues when there's not a massive head of carp but you're sort of, they're always going to be present or in the swim at some point, there's no point putting a big bed of bait in because all you're going to do is attract carp and then once they're in the swim the silvers will spook off and you'll stop catching. So I always find on every line, sort of the minimal amount of bait possible is the best way to go. So that small ball, I'm gonna pop in on that short line. And then on my two further lines, I'm not gonna feed anything at all to start with. The main reason for this is that I'm not exactly sure what to feed. So I'm gonna pop that small ball of ground bait in on that short line, but they might not want the ground bait or they might want more ground bait or they might want more loose feed and I've even got the option of a few pellets as well if I think that there's more skimmers than rope. So kind of, I'm not going to commit myself to anything on them far lines. This ball's going to go in on that short line and then hopefully we can catch some fish on there, gauge the response and then move on to them far lines and catch some fish late on in the session. I had a great start on that short line. It's been a little bit different to what I thought it was going to be because when I was here a while ago, it was all ropes that I was catching. But today it seems to be more skimmers and I've had three. Well, if we get this one in, it'll be the third cruiser that I've had as well. So it's been a bit of a mixture of species. But I started on the, on the 4 by 12 rig, expecting to catch roach. And I did have a couple of roach, but not as many as I was expecting. I was catching skimmers, so I've switched to kind of a skimmer rig, which is exactly the same, but a 4 by 14 And just fishing that on the bottom. And uh, catching, yeah, catching a few little skimmers, 4 to 6 ounces, some of them. I was catching them nicely, and then it's just gone quiet. So what I've done is popped another ball in. And my last three fish have been a better skimmer and then two cruisers, so it just shows that they're definitely coming to that ground bait. I'm loose feeding a few maggots over the top of it, but popping that ball in just made a massive difference. It's definitely, definitely kicked them back into life. So that's given me the confidence now to know that on them far lines that they're going to come to that ground bait. So if they haven't responded to it on the short line, I wouldn't have put it in on the long line, but knowing that they've come to that ball straight away and they've been better quality fish, it's kind of, it, it's given me the, the confidence now that I'm going to put a ball in on both of those far lines and then I've got three lines to then rotate. Because this one, as I said, it did go off, it did die off and I just, I didn't want to commit to them other lines. I wanted to put that ball in, see how they responded they come to it straight away, so I know they're definitely on the ground bait. I'm going to pop a ball in on them over two lines, and then I've got three lines to rotate. And hopefully, I can up my catch rate a little bit as well. But yeah, it's been really enjoyable so far. You're never quite sure when the float goes under what it's going to be. I don't know if this might be another cruising, but it's definitely different to 
last time I was here. Last time I was here, there's loads of roach. Fished it pretty much the same. But today, the better quality fish, the skimmers, and then these crucians, whether it's because I'm pleasure fishing and last time I was in a match, that could be the difference, or it could just become a different area of the lake. Fish I'm on a four to six slick, which is perfect for skimmers, for roach. And also I've got the puller kit, so if I do hook a carp or a tench or a better fish, I can I can use that and just take my time. I can still land most things. I mean, say I'm fishing light, I'm fishing 010. It's not the middle of the summer. The fish aren't going to be tearing about everywhere. So as long as I take my time, I think even if I do hook a carp, I should be able to land it. But I'm committed to catching these lovely silver fish, these crucians as well. So hopefully get the ground baiting on them other two lines and then proper start bagging. I'm just going to keep pinging a few maggots on that short line and the line out there because I think a few maggots dropping through the water definitely attracts the fish even though I know they're coming to that ground bait I think dropping a few maggots in as well definitely helps when you're targeting silvers but um, it's important just to keep two or three maggots just trickling in just trying to attract a few fish into your swim especially on that short line as well because I still feel like there's fish there. I've not plundered it to death. And that's really important when you're targeting silver. You always leave yourself somewhere to catch. So I've, I've left that knowing that there's still a few fish on that line. Hopefully I'm going to catch a few fish on these longer lines as well. And then that way I can just rotate all three. When I feel like they're just starting to die off a little bit, I'll swap swims. And then that way should have three swims that are working for me all the time. Getting a few indications on this long line now. There's odd leaves about, which is making things a little bit awkward. I think it's going to take a little while just for the fish to come onto it. And to feed them a bit of confidence. But once to do, that's it's a sign that the fish are there. And then I'm going to feed my other line as well in a minute. And then that way I've got three swims on the go. And just keep rotating them hopefully keep putting fishing right to the end of the session then. Keep lifting and dropping the ring. Quite often if you if it's on the bottom and you're not catching, you just lift it up, drop it back through the water. Surprising how that can attract the fish just with that hook bait falling through. Whereas if you just sit with it on the bottom waiting, it's not catching anything's attention. There we go, it's the first fish on that long line. Took a little bit longer to come than I was expecting. I thought it'd be instant, I thought we'd drop in and get one straight away, but that's why I think it's important to keep them maggots going in as well, because although the, that ground bait gives them so much to home in on, something for you to present your bait over, I do think it's that loose feeding of those maggots that actually draws the fish into the swim. So it's a combination of the two that actually helps you put the weight together. I think I'm going to pop a, a ball in on the other line now and then I'm going to have the three swims and I'm just going to keep feeding all three with the maggots and dropping the odd ball of ground bait in and hopefully put a net together. What an enjoyable day that's been. I've caught from all three of my lines and I've caught steadily all day. It's not been ever so easy. There's been times where the fish have just backed off a little bit and I've had to make a few changes. But I've been catching roach and little skimmers like this pretty steady all day. And I think that's a lovely fish to end on. You'll notice I've got the 4 by 12 rig on now, the strung out girly rig. And what happened earlier was 
I just completely stopped catching. And it's just, whatever line I went on, nothing seemed to be working. So I've, I've kind of fed it a couple of different ways, trying to make something that's happened, nothing happened. So I've picked up my light, four of 12 rig up, laid it in. I've been catching a roach and skimmer every single put. And the only difference was changing that rig. Um, putting this light rig on completely transformed it. And then I've still fished it over depth and it's given me two options of catching a roach on the drop, which quite often I was doing. And then if it got to the bottom, just like it did that time, just let it sit there and settle. And then I was catching a skimmer. So that sort of last day has been really enjoyable because I've made a small change. It's made a massive difference to my catch rate, but there's a lot of leaves blown over than that now. So I think it's making it a little bit more difficult. So it's time to get the net out and have a look what we've caught. What a lovely net of fish. I think it must be probably 15 pound there. Lots of skimmers, a couple of lovely crusions, which are a bonus when you're fishing for silvers. Yeah, and I've really enjoyed it. Then, uh, as I say, it's not been ever so easy. I had to work for them, but I think if you're targeting commercial silvers, you commit to it, keep everything light, keep everything tight, and fish several lines. Next like this, always possible.